Hey students, this is Mr. Liu, and I'm recording this video for you because I'm not exactly sure what my schedule will be like this week. We do have a shorter week. Uh, school is on Monday and Tuesday, and it's just for, on 8A, it's letters A through K, and it looks like on Tuesday, it is a B day for the letters L through Z. So, um, I would only see a portion of you anyway, so this video uh, is for those of you who are also studying at home. Um, it is a short week, but there's some things I thought that I'd go ahead and review with you just in case you had any questions. First of all, again, uh, you should have your project proposal submitted. Uh, that is an absolute. If you need video instructions, as you can see, uh, I have video instructions embedded on the senseilu.com website specifically within the Sensei slide. This week uh, on the A day, uh, this would be economics and marketing uh, for the letters A through K. Um, if you're uh, in class, uh, we will be discussing C6, C.6, uh, that's chapter six, and it's about competition. So you'll learn um, about uh, perfect competition as well as imperfect competition. Now, perfect competition um, technically doesn't exist, but that is where you would find, uh, you would find uh, commodity products. Everything is the same, essentially the same. Uh, there is no price differentiation. Um, the sellers are basically price takers. When you move into uh, imperfect competition, then you begin with something called monopolistic competition. Now, monop monopolistic competition is similar to uh, perfect competition. However, uh, each product is distinguished uh, through branding strategies. So the sellers of various goods do everything they can to um, establish their products as different. Back in the days when Henry Ford was selling the Model T, uh, he really didn't have uh, much competition initially, but then uh, Alfred Sloan, uh, who headed up General Motors, uh, decided that their strategy would be to um, create colors that were, or create vehicles that were another color other than just black. That was Henry Ford's thing. Just uh, you could have any color car you wanted as long as it was black. Well, Alfred Sloan with General Motors said, we're gonna do things different and that was gonna be the General Motors way. So under monopolistic competition, you do have variety. Uh, you have branded products as opposed to commodity item where everything's essentially the same. So uh, somebody might be uh, targeting or a company might be targeting the high-end customers. Somebody uh, like a Walmart might be targeting the low-end customers. So there are uh, product niches. The next step in imperfect uh, competition is the oligopoly. The oligopoly is uh, a few companies that are involved. Typically, we've seen uh, the uh, automobile industry uh, has been a big oligopoly uh, where you had just a few big automobile companies. Uh, that is starting to change a bit uh, with companies like Tesla, Nikola, and so forth. Uh, oligopolies, uh, one of the characteristics of an oligopoly is that you have high barriers to entry. In other words, it's difficult to enter into that marketplace uh, because of cost, because of uh, competition, and so forth. Finally, there is something called monopoly. Monopolies uh, are against the law. So uh, antitrust law was created to uh, stop monopolies. Uh, J.D. Rockefeller uh, was uh, the gentleman that uh, owned Standard Oil. And it used to be that he had a monopoly on the distribution of uh, the uh, oil products, gasoline. And another big monopoly example would be the case against Microsoft, the United States versus Microsoft. And while that was settled, uh, Microsoft eventually did appeal the ruling and the company was not broken up, whereas Standard Oil was broken up. 
uh, but they're um, in the um, final agreement. Uh, Microsoft did have to make some concessions and uh, actually had to start uh, allowing their competitors to um, be more integrated with their products. So those are the different types of market structures that exist. Again, it starts out with uh, perfect competition, then monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and then monopoly. That's something important to remember for the final exam. Speaking of the final exam, one thing that you should be working on if you are an accounting, excuse me, an economic student, you should be studying the uh, Nearpod study guide. You just click right there and launch the Nearpod study guide and uh, just, uh, you know, type your name here. Okay. And choose join lesson. And you just go through, click on the arrow, right arrow here, just go through each one of these. One thing that may be new to you is a concept called aggregate demand. Aggregate demand describes total demand. Uh, and as you can see, there's a formula here that says aggregate demand is equal to consumer spending plus uh, investment spending plus government spending plus exports minus imports. So that's something to be aware of, something to know. Um, and uh, that, that will be a test related question. Uh, there are several slides here, but I, uh, and it may seem like it's going to take you a long time, but I would advise that you just uh, do that. So here's an example of open any question. I'll click the play if here. If any input to GDP were to decline, what would happen to aggregate demand? Got it. And once again, just go through the entire slide. There's uh, information about uh, what unemployment is, how it is counted. Just remember, you have to be 16 years or older to be counted in the United States unemployment number. And you must be actively seeking work. So those are some of the key um, phrases that you look for when you're taking the final exam. Once again, another open-ended question. And you might get a question something like this. Who is counted as unemployed? Okay, I'm going to actually stop the Nearpod right now, but uh, again, I highly recommend. Uh, in fact, um, probably sounds too strong, but I insist that you do the Nearpod because that is going to be the best way to prepare for the economics final exam. We'll take that exam sometime in early December after the holidays. If you are... Uh, also, all students should be working on their projects. If you are in A4, that would be marketing. If you're in marketing, you should be working on the stock market game. I guess that would be true also for economic students. Um, you, uh, if you need instruction on how to join, click on the video instructions. Also learn how to buy and sell. Basically, as I have uh, said in my other videos, uh, the concept or the principle that you should follow is buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. Also keep in mind that we're playing in a very short window. The game ends on December 11th. Therefore, there really is no long play in this game. And your strategy should be just looking for those opportunities, buying at the right time and selling quickly to make money. If you're in the marketing class, you should also be playing the stock market game and you should be working on your project, preparing to uh, present to the class. Presentations begin on December 1st and uh, the earlier the better. However, you have through uh, early January to complete this particular uh, presentation. As you can see, here is the calendar. This gives you some sense of what the calendar looks like. Uh, we do not know at this time whether or not uh, we will return to this alternate schedule after the holidays. So stay tuned and look for more information from the uh, Springville High School Administration as well as the Nebo School District. Uh, with that, uh, I would just say to my other classes, if you are in uh, the B-Day classes, B1, uh, or yeah, I guess it would just be B1 for entrepreneurship, 
uh, you should be uh, uh, looking at the accidental inventions uh, and writing a reflection about that, accidental inventions, and then working on your project. If you're in B3, B4, and you're uh, studying digital business applications with me, uh, this week we're going to work on, actually the week next week and the week afterwards, uh, we're working on a project called Ethics of Public Shaming. And we're going to discuss, uh, I'm going to have you write an opinion paper uh, or a letter to the editor, if you will, about this article in the Deseret News about public shaming. Uh, it's also, there also is a video about uh, the cancel culture. And so we'll discuss that, but you also uh, need to put together uh, a, an opinion piece, which you'll actually uh, submit it to me in a Canvas uh, submission text box. So um, just let me know what your thoughts are on public shaming. With that, folks, uh, that is it. I hope to be with you this week. But if I am unable to be there, know that um, I'm thinking about you and that I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, with your family, your friends, and that life's good for you. Take care.